Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I wanted to get you up and running with Transform. In a quick video, I'll show you some uh, basics on how to get set up and how to start animating. So here we are in a scene, and uh, in this case, we'll start with some MoText. Really simple MoText. We bring it into our scene, and all you have to do is go up to your plugins after you install it. Make sure you watch the uh, install video. And uh, grab a Transform and pull your MoText into Transform. Uh, at, just make it a child. This goes with any object. So once you have it as a child, you can go into transform and you can see on the screen, it's actually telling us to refresh. Every time you do a major change to anything below um, the transform in your hierarchy, you're gonna want to refresh. So let's just go in and hit refresh and we're all set. Uh, transform is now taking our object and it's animating it right away. So the default uh, effect here is the transform effect. And because we brought in a mo text, it automatically set our mode to cloner. Um, also, because we have text, transform sees that we have letters, lines, and words, uh, similar so you can animate separately. Um, but you can, all, you can start to play around and get your text kind of moving around. But let's start looking at some other modes. Uh, new, to, new to this version of transform is poly mode. So we click poly mode, hit refresh, and now you can see it's actually animating every polygon um, in our in our um, word here instead of letter by letter. And one thing you may notice is that some polygons are larger than others. Uh, if you come up into your display mode and you go to sh uh, show lines, you're gonna see that some of these polygons are big and some of these polygons are small like the ones on the curves here on the R. And this is an interesting look, but sometimes you want it to be all kind of more uniform. And that's why we designed SuperText to go along with this. Uh, SuperText comes with uh, Supertext comes with Transform, and you can also find it in, our, uh, in your plugins menu. Just grab Supertext and just make that and kind of stick this in between Transform and MoText. So what it's going to do is it's going to be a parent of MoText and then Transform, you're going to put that in Transform. So here's the hierarchy here. Again, refresh Transform, uh, and let's just actually shut it off for now. Let's set up Supertext, and then we'll turn on Transform again. So what we really want Supertext to do in this case is click on divide and you can see automatically it starts setting up your polygons and breaking up your uh, objects and words into uh, more uniform polygons. So we have some control here. We could turn up the subdivision size and make these pieces bigger. We could change the angle so we can really kind of set up bigger or smaller pieces depending on what we're trying, the effect we're trying to make. Uh, but whenever we're ready, we could just turn on transform, hit refresh, and now when it does our polygon modes, uh, it's affecting it kind of more uniformly. So, you know, come in, come in here to effects and start playing around with maybe some of the other polygon modes. Here's one where it kind of flies in. In this case, maybe we want to add some more rotation. So let's go down here and look at the movement sliders for now. The movement sliders are going to allow you to take our presets and then uh, adjust them to uh, kind of customize them for what you want them to, to do. So in this case, maybe we like this, but it's, it's kind of flying in too much. So let's turn this movement way down. In this case now, it's, it's kind of moving forward, but we want it to scale down. So here's another slider, end scale. We could set this to zero, and now as it moves forward, it's breaking off and kind of scaling to zero. Um, we could also adjust the rotation and also the randomness. Um, so we can see the less randomness, everything kind of happens all at once. See that? Every polygon's moving all together. Just hit render here. You can see each polygon's kind of moving together. But the more that we add randomness, it's the more it's going to um, randomize which pieces are going first and which ones are second and so on. So one of the things that you could use with randomness to, to help uh, design the animation that you want is the orientation. So if we set this to X, and we turn down our randomness, you can see that uh, the left or the right side of, of our logo here is transitioning before the other side, right? So this is driving the direction of our animation. Um, not just the direction of, of uh, not the direction of the clones themselves or it, the polygons, but the actual way that the transition comes into B. So we could set this to Y, and now you can see it's going from bottom to top. And we have all the other settings there. And if you want everything to happen all at once, we have uniform random. We also have shader. These, are be, these will be covered in other videos. 
I uh, just want to get you started in this quick start video on playing around with stuff. Okay, so what else can you do? We could bring in an object. So let's, uh, let's just pull super text and turn it off and let's bring this cube into transform. So same thing, we have to refresh and uh, uh, transform automatically breaks our cube up into individual polygons. But you can see um, it will not break it up uh, any further than that. So this cube only has six sides by default. You can see we have segments over here and we have one segment per side, which basically means six polygons and we hit play and transform handles it and uh, breaks it up into polygons, but it won't, it won't break it up any further than the original geometry. So there are ways to, to do that. First of all, if it's a parametric object, you could just add more geometry to it. And so now we have 10 sides here. Uh, 10 um, by 10 on each side. We have 100 polygons on, on each side of this cube, and now it's animating uh, each one of those separately. Uh, and this also works with chunk mode, obviously. Uh, if you go to chunk mode, you could see we, if, once we click refresh, chunk mode also breaks things up into polygons, but it groups the polygons into larger chunks. So it's not each individual little polygon. We actually have uh, bigger chunks here. Uh, you can also adjust thickness to kind of give your uh, chunks. And this also works in poly mode. You can also give your chunks a little bit of thickness so it's not just like paper thin things uh, moving around. And again, come up into, you know, different modes here and play around with the different presets and make it look the way that you want. Uh, so that is, uh, that is bringing existing objects in. Uh, let me also show you uh, something we get a lot of questions about, and that is how to transition from one object to another. So uh, in this case, we're going to use, um, let's just start with a sphere and a cube, and let's just start fresh with a new transform. So let's go up to plugins, transform, and we're gonna need two for this, right? So we have two transforms, one is called in, and one is called out, okay? So let's ha start with our sphere, um, and pull that into one of your transforms and the cube into another one. And we, could, we need to refresh these. We can also refresh these uh, at the same time by selecting both of our transforms, clicking refresh, and it's gonna refresh everything all at once. Okay, so in this case, we want the cube to transition into the sphere. So this is going out, right? The cube is going out and the sphere is coming in. So all we have to do is go to our out uh, transform and set that to out and go to our in transform and set that to in. So one is transitioning in and one is transitioning out. So this is a very simple way to transition between two objects. Um, what helps is when they're similar sizes, you can see they're uh, kind of all in the same area. So it looks like they're transitioning from one to another. You can also select similar effects. So if we um, do something like crash here, you can see one will, one will animate out and one will animate in. But you can see there's a little overlap here. So how do we fix that? Well, we can select both of our, our um, transforms here and we could select fall off and we can kind of narrow this down now. So now we're starting to try to make it look like it's falling into the same object. We could also turn the movement down and the rotation down and also uh, some of the randomness down. So it's not a, just a linear line. So uh, now we have kind of one object kind of transforming into another. And you could play around with those effects uh, using either the custom mode or um, any of the presets. So uh, speaking of the custom mode, let's look at one more example. Start fresh here and uh, we will bring in a cube and very quickly we're just gonna make a set of clones here. And this is uh, to show you a couple things. First of all, that you can use clones uh, you know, you can bring your clones into transform directly. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, add transform. Let's take our cloner, put it as a child and transform automatically sees that it's a cloner. We just have to hit refresh. And again, it's gonna start to animate each one of those clones separately. Um, and so what can we do now? Well, now if we can't find the preset that does exactly what we want, we can come up to custom mode and start to basically build our own animation. So by default, uh, you're gonna see the uh, animation is scaling up or moving up and scaling down. So we can come into our custom mode 
And in here, you're going to see, first of all, the velocity curve. This is the animation speed and the curve of each individual object. And then you're going to see a bunch of parameters down below that we can animate. So uh, obviously, where it starts is where, however your object is starting. And of course, you can make, make this animate in or out, depending on the transition. We'll make this go animate out. And we'll just keep this playing. And we can play around with some different um, custom settings. So in this case, it's animating up. That's fine. Let's go down to rotation. You can see we can rotate each one of these objects left or right. Uh, but then we can also add randomness. So random uh, position and rotation as it flies out. Let's do that as well with rotation. So now they're kind of animating through this way. We can also say, hey, I don't want the scale to go to zero. I, I want them to stay large, you know. Um, but you can see if your objects are scaled up, sometimes they just kind of get to where they get to where they end up and then they freeze there. If you don't want them to stop there, you could turn on animation. So if you have randomness here, uh, you can start to animate the position and animate the rotation. So now they're gonna hit their mark and they're gonna kind of wander around, right? Um, so let's just add a few more frames to the end here. Let's pause this. And we're gonna add a few more frames to the end just so we could see this uh, happening. And nope, we gotta add more frames to this. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now it's going to transition out, and then you're going to see them kind of move around and continue to animate, um, even though their main animation is over. So uh, you could set the overall animation at the movement settings here. Uh, and it, at any case, if I gloss over any of these in this quick start, I know I can't get to everything in this video, um, but if I miss anything and you're like, hey, what does that slider do? We have all the training for each individual tab up here and each individual slider and everything. And we, we will let you know exactly what everything does. But I want to make sure we get through enough of this here so you can get started. Um, so here we go. So now all of our clones are flying out and now they are moving around exactly like we, we wanted them to. But uh, they are intersecting. So in, in this case... Uh, in our cloner, uh, in cloner mode, we can actually come into our cubes and add a, a rigid body tag, go to the force and set your follow position, you know, turn this up a little bit high. But now you're going to see it's going to animate, but it's going to respect the dynamics. In fact, if we go into our custom tab and uh, start to scale up um, some of the uh, some of the effects here, so random scale, you can see it's it's going to respect dynamics um, as it moves. Um, and this works really well with cloner mode. Some of things like uh, poly mode, uh, you know, dynamics won't work with just the polys, but as soon as you start looking at existing parts and poly modes here, you get some really nice dynamic settings. Just want to show you how quickly that is to set up. Uh, the last thing I'll say, and we won't set this up exactly, but if you ever need anything else, um, any, any pre effects or post effects on your cloners, you can actually add those inside of Transform using our uh, post effectors and pre effectors. So if you just uh, turn these checkboxes on, you could add, you know, like delay effectors at the end of the animation. So it's really springy, things like that. Or pre effectors like adding randomness to your clones before it enters into Transform. So you have to set those up here. Um, one last thing uh, this is new in the latest version. You can also animate uh, directly. Let me just turn off our dynamics so this runs really fast. You can animate directly from within Transform. So now you don't have to just set an in and out point. You can just have a slider now that you can go up and down and up and down. So if you want your transition to kind of go out and then come back later, you don't have to rely on two copies of Transform. You could just come on here and say, okay, I want you to animate out and then do your thing there for a while. And then I'll just keyframe this back in. So. Uh, you could always turn that back on and off just using this animate checkbox. This has been really helpful with certain effects and playing around with it. So anyway, uh, I'm sure we didn't, uh, I'm, I'm positive we didn't get to everything inside of Transform, but hopefully uh, it's a quick video to get you up and running and start to play with uh, some of these presets and custom mode and start to really explore what Transform could do for your projects. Um, so Thanks again for watching the video. Be sure to check out more of the training videos. Uh, if you're interested in more of these uh, tabs and sliders, grab our, um, our training videos and we're going to make sure we go through all of those uh, settings for you. So thanks again for checking out Transform and uh, hopefully see you in another video really soon. Bye, everybody.